Hello everyone. I know it's been a long time since I've last posted a science video. Um, I've been going through exams and moving out from my old student residence. I'm finally done in my undergraduate years at university. Um, it's going to be a little bit longer till I can post some more interesting science videos. I'm currently uh, unpacking all of my equipment and I'll be gone for two weeks to uh, do some other stuff. However, once I get back, I should be doing some interesting projects uh, here in my lab as well as uh, with friends. Otherwise, I wanted to post a short little video, I'm not even going to bother editing it, um, just to introduce a simple concept, and that's how to use an analytical lab balance. Uh, this was actually my most recent acquisition off of labx.com, which is a uh, it's an lab equipment auction site um, that's something like eBay but for science equipment that goes all the way into the industrial range of uh, thousand liter reactors. But uh, you can get even these small uh, old balances fairly cheap. I wanted to uh, address a couple uh, points. One was how to use one of these balances, assuming it's already been set up and calibrated. Uh, this is mainly for the uh, undergraduate chemistry students. And I also wanted to address a pet peeve of mine that I've seen undergrads, graduates, and even postdocs do themselves. This is uh, not that hard a mistake to make and overlook, so I'll get to that later. Uh, first off, I just want to quickly show how to use a balance for those that don't know. All balances will have these uh, similar features, a power button, uh, a mode button to determine the units, as well as a zero or tear, that is T-A-R-E, button, which uh, zeroes the scale as well as the uh, actual uh, scale pan itself with a removable tray for cleaning. Um, some have dust covers. All of them will have this little uh, leveling bubble, either in the front or the back. There's sometimes a calibration switch. Um, the ones that you need to worry about are just these three buttons, the power, uh, the mode, and the zero button. Now, all balances will tell you how much um, well, they'll tell you what their capabilities are. Their capacity, which in this case is 210 grams, as well as their resolution, which is 0 0.001 grams. Uh, the good analytical balances will give you a uh, range of error, so exam for example, plus or minus 0 0.001 grams. In this case, this is just the resolution. Um, not all balances will have this, but the good ones will. So, to use this uh, electronic balance, First, turn it on and wait for it to zero itself. This indicator tells you when the uh, scale has stabilized, and this is actually the indication of the value and the units that it's measuring in. So, to weigh an empty vial, for example, you would wait for it to zero and be stable, and then place it on the uh, balance pan and wait till it's stable. This is the mass of this vial. Now, note how sensitive this uh, balance is. If I even blow on the pan gently, you can note that there's a large change in the actual value. This is why most good analytical balances have a glass box that surrounds this area with the sliding doors so that you can actually weigh your sample without any wind or vibration uh, disturbing it. This one doesn't. I will have to try and uh, build one for it, but still, for the price I got it at, it was worth it. Another common uh, procedure is to weigh an empty vial, and then weigh a full vial and take the difference of the mass. Uh, some people may have done this by hand, especially before electronic balances came about. However, today, all balances can do this automatically. So, start with an empty balance and make sure it's zeroed. Place an empty vial on the balance and wait for it to stabilize. Once it's stabilized, re-zero it. This balance now is taking into account the mass of this vial. Anything added to this vial, including labels, uh, moisture, or the actual sample itself, will be taken into account, but not the vial mass. So I'm going to cheat and use this pre-prepared vial. The uh, mass of the vial will be different, but at least it will illustrate the concept. So say you obtained some sample from a reaction, you've weighed this vial and zeroed the scale, now you have 1.270 grams of sample in that vial. Now, note that there's a label on here, no label on here. 
this mass takes into account that label. So when you're doing this method, make sure to take that into account. Either label it before you uh, zero the scale, or label it after you've already taken your measurement with your product. I would recommend labeling it before, just so you don't mix up samples, though. Now to address this pet peeve I was mentioning earlier. Um, I've seen so many people do this, it really annoys me, um, especially when people claim to be analytical chemists. Um, that is leveling the scale. Now, all scales will have this uh, leveling bubble and adjustable feet on the front. Um, the main reason for leveling this scale is because the actual mechanism that this pan rests on wants to move vertically down onto a load cell. If it's at an angle, some of that force will be distributed into the side of uh, this motion. And as a result, uh, you're not going to get an accurate value. Now, once the scale has actually been properly set up, doesn't necessarily need to be calibrated too often, but at least properly leveled and on a stable flat surface, it should be fine for quite a while, and it shouldn't need recalibration or uh, re-zeroing. However, if you move the scale and it um, is no longer level, that becomes an issue. I have seen students move scales to a location more convenient to them without actually re-zeroing, without actually re-leveling, sorry, uh, these balances. And as a result, they get inaccurate or inconsistent readings. Uh, inaccurate readings aren't so much of a uh, concern, more so the uh, inconsistency between them. If you take the same vial and place it on the balance ten times, you want that reading to be the exact same even if uh, it has air in it. You want that air to be the same every time. Now without leveling it, you could get different values each time, and that could throw off your experiment or results, or just give you uh, unpredicted yields. So in general you just want to level it and not move the scale once it's set up. Um, for those of you that need to move your scales, uh, say into a fume hood to weigh a compound that's a little too volatile or hazardous, you would move the scale and then re-level it and not move it until you uh, are finished measuring. Uh, in general, though, for uh, most users, you don't need to be too concerned about the actual calibration. Um, consult your manual if you do need to calibrate. There are usually calibration switches and uh, calibration weights that you are supposed to use. There are some common values like 1 gram, 3 grams, 10, 100 grams um, that have been uh, carefully machined to be uh, near precise values and you would use the calibration switch with those weights to actually uh, calibrate the scale. Um, for the most part though you don't need that function once the scale has been properly set up. So this has been a short little video that I just wanted to introduce the concept on, um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please rate, subscribe, and comment. I'll also be back in two weeks, approximately, and I'll begin doing more experiments and filming more videos, so keep yourself posted.